so first off, I'll introduce myself. My name is Matt. Uh, this is Cam and Zach. Uh, our company is Cash Case, and we've developed, patented, and produced just recently a mobile um, uh, phone case and wallet hybrid that can hold your, your cards as well as your cash. Um, we wanted to create a uh, product that would kind of eliminate the, the bulk that people carry around with them. Uh, we figured uh, in today's society everyone's moving fast, they have places to go, and uh, we wanted to just consolidate their, their two most prized possessions into one. Yeah, so I think Matt did a pretty good job at describing the, uh, the business. Um, in terms of who am I, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur and a graduating student from Dalhousie University. Um, I'm, I've founded three businesses before and I'm, I'm really passionate about solving this problem that Matt just described. I'm Zach Levy, I'm a serial entrepreneur and I'm also a web developer. I started out in the back end and now I'm uh, doing front end development. Just to demo our, our product quickly, so so this is the cash case. Uh, this is our latest model. Uh, it holds your cash in here with the money club, and you got your the cards that you need. You got your driver's license, your credit card, and you know the three cards you use most. And Zach will show you our pouch uh, solution too. This is uh, this is the model for uh, BlackBerry and some Android phones, and it's it's similar. It holds uh, cards here in the front, and then inside is the uh, the pouch that holds the cell phone. And on the back is a money clip here uh, with magnets uh, that'll hold your uh, your coins and also your bills. Cool. We get this question all the time: uh, whether the uh, the magnets affect the credit card or the phone. And uh, the most the easiest solution to uh, to that question would be uh, MythBuster season one, episode six. It takes an incredible amount of magnetic um, force to. Uh, to affect either the credit card or the phone. And none of our actual customers have, have complained about any problem or any sort of, even a hotel key being demagnified, so we're, we're confident with our magnets. Enough memory uh, on the camera for me to go through all the hurdles, because there's been a lot. But this is our first big venture that we um, journeyed into. Um, so we were very naive about some of the challenges that we faced. Um, obviously, we outsourced the production to China, which introduced us to a ton of uh, challenges with that. The biggest one was quality control. I think we, we had a little bit too much trust in the manufacturers in China, so we, we had some faulty inventory that we had to deal with. Um, capital, we, we've been able to fund this all from retained earnings from previous businesses, so we haven't had to go out and fundraise, but just managing our own capital has been tough. Um, being a young entrepreneur, I think for all of us, uh, prioritizing and knowing what's important to actually grow the business has been a, it's been a steep learning process. Um, it's funny when I think of all the mistakes and, and learning with the legal stuff too. We, we were very fortunate to get a, a good lawyer to help us along. We talked to a few uh, greasier guys before we found the right one at an early enough stage, which has helped us tremendously because ha having this idea patented and getting the right claims in gives us a defensible position and has afforded us the time to, to learn all these things. But I think I think it's, it's just about we've, we've learned them now, so now, so now it's a smoother process in terms of manufacturing quality control. If one word of advice for anyone who's developing a product would be when you go overseas. Uh, for manufacturing, if you use Alibaba, which is sort of the most common vehicle that you leverage to find your uh, OEM manufacturer, you need to make sure they're, they're gold, supply, gold standard, and we'd be to talk to customers that they've done business with in North America to, to ensure quality, and talk to a few. Along the lines of what Cam was just talking about, um, we had one particular instance where we ordered a small shipment of cases and um, we had magnets that didn't really quite meet our standards and this kind of um, delayed a uh, negotiations with a, a certain supplier in Canada um, and that's something we wish we could have uh, taken back and done again but it was definitely uh, an important uh, step in the learning process and we're glad it happened early on. I think the resources that we've we've gone out and actually talked to some mentors. I think kind of the the brain capital has been the most useful in learning them telling them 
on their mistakes that they made in starting a business and that we've gone out and tried to not make some of the same mistakes. Um, online, our biggest resource has been Alibaba. That's allowed us to find a few different manufacturers and we've learned a lot through that. I don't know if you guys have anything to add to that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of resources, even with our new e-commerce shop that we just launched. Um, we're working with Shopify, which is a great partner. Um, they, they pretty much take care of everything on the e-commerce side. We're happy with them. Our biggest challenge right now is to find a uh, distributor in the U.S. Uh, the cases right now, they're selling fantastically, you know, with direct sales uh, locally. But we really want to expand that. Uh, both to the rest of Canada and the U.S. I, I think what inspires me to keep going is when we bring this product to market, um, consumers and friends, but, but even consumers in order that we don't know at all, are constantly telling us and, and me, the ones that, that have communicated with me, how much they like this product, how much time it saves them, especially the more disorganized ones that, that always are losing their wallet and how they like just one compact solution. So with all these problems and the manufacturing problem that we talked about too, when you see at the end of the day that you put a smile on a customer's face, there's really nothing better than that, especially because it was an idea that we had, that we brought to market, and we actually are solving the problem that we went out um, and tried to solve. So it's, it's a really, really cool feeling. Again, Financially, as actually we need a distributor to make the, to solve many more consumers' problems and, and to bring this idea widespread, but the results from early sales have been really, really heartening. And who inspires you? Uh, my personal inspiration is, is mostly from uh, Salman Khan. He started Khan Academy, really uh, shaking up an entire industry. Uh, just one man, so uh, he's really sort of uh, his tactics and, and his way of using his uh, his passion to solve problems is my inspiration. Yeah, my inspirational uh, entrepreneur is Howard Schultz. Um, when he started Starbucks, coffee consumption was declining in the United States, and he fundamentally changed an industry and made it more of a lifestyle. And the product that he created, Starbucks, isn't necessarily so innovative in terms of what high-tech inventions are coming out, but what he created was so cool. So that's that's my inspiration. It, it came from nothing, kind of grew up organically. Yeah. I would say my personal hero is probably Elon Musk. He's, uh, for those of you who don't know him, he started uh, PayPal, co-founded PayPal, as well as SpaceX and Tesla. So what impresses me is that he just went after the biggest industries and tried to come up with some disruptive innovation. and. Uh, He's, he's like a, a real-life Tony Stark from Iron Man. He's just a super impressive guy. That's, uh, that's what motivates me. I want to go after big problems.